Welcome to Engineering Mechanics, Dynamics, and this lesson in Curvilinear Motion and Rectangular Components. Start off by drawing a path of a particle and a particle on the path. And you And so you, you can characterize a particle in space with a vector r. So we will do that. So we have our vector r. And now let's say our particle moved. And so at a later time, we have a new vector r prime. And so r minus r prime equals the change in r. So on that graph, there we have the change in R. And we also have the arc distance, which is the change in S. And now to define velocity. So velocity average is the V average equals the change in R over the change in time. And the instantaneous change in velocity equals the instantaneous change in R with respect to time and the instantaneous change in S with respect to time. Because once you get to smaller and smaller changes, instantaneous, they're both going to be equal. And so what does that look like on the graph? Well, instantaneous is just going to be perpendicular to the motion, so we're like that. And now what we're going to do is what's called a hodograph. And what this is, is we have another path of a particle, but our origin now is... O prime because we're going to put our velocity vectors at the origin. And so here's our velocity at r and let's say our, here's our velocity at r prime. So velocity prime. And by doing this you end up with a change in velocity and a average equals the change in velocity over the change in time. And a acceleration equals the instantaneous change of velocity with respect to time or the double derivative of r with respect to time. And so to sum it all up, we have a path with a particle and an origin and r. And the velocity at that point, v, and the acceleration at that point, a. And now we're going to talk about rectangular components. So right here we have a graph with a x, y, and z axis and a vector r. And we're going to characterize this vector r with rectangular components. And so r equals a component in the x direction, a component in the y direction, and z direction, or x can be characterized i, j, and k. And so first you can go in the x direction. And then in the y direction, and then in the z direction to characterize your particle. And then to get velocity in each direction, you just take the derivative of each direction instantaneous with respect to time for each component. So you split it up into components. And it ends up looking like that. You know, and then you do the same thing for acceleration. You do the acceleration of each component, which will give you that in the end. And now we have projectile motion. So there's our projectile. And to solve this, you want to split up its into two components. So one in the x direction and the y component direction. And the x direction will have no acceleration. And then the y direction will just have um, gravity. So the x direction component is the constant velocity. Yeah, constant velocity equation, equation with zero acceleration. And the y direction are the ones with constant acceleration. And so you can use these equations when there's constant acceleration, but only if there's constant acceleration. And this is the stuff you've should have seen in physics already. 
And um, thank you. Oh, yeah. And thank you for learning. Now we're going to go on to an example. All right. So here's our example. We have a particle going from A to B at initial velocity of V sub A going at 30 degrees. And from A to B is 3.6 meters in the x direction, 1.5 in the y direction. And so let's sort of solve, let's split this up into two components, a x component and a y component. And so since in the x component there is no acceleration, we can just use the constant velocity equations. So in the x component, x of b equals x of a plus v of a in the x direction times the time it takes to get from a to b. And so what is v sub a in the x direction? So v sub a in the x direction equals v sub a times the cosine of 30, which equals 0 0.866 v sub a. And so now let's plug that back into our original equation and move stuff around and you'll end up with v sub a times t sub from a to b equals 4.157 and so I just plugged this into there and move stuff around. And now we're going to do the y component and so to do this we will have y sub b equals y sub a plus the velocity of a in the y direction times the time it takes to get from a to b plus one half times the acceleration times time from a to b squared. And so we know y sub b equals 1.5 meters. This equals 0 v sub a sub y equals, or the velocity of a in the y direction, equals the velocity of a times the sine of 30, which equals 0.5 v sub a. We're trying to find this, and acceleration equals negative 9.81, and we're trying to find this. And so then, you end up with 1.5 equals 0 0.5 v sub a times the time it takes to get from a to b plus one half times negative 9.81 times the time it takes to get from a to b squared. And so since we know that v sub a times the time it takes to get from a to b equals 4.157 meters, we can plug that in to right there, and then our only unknown is the time it takes to get from A to B, and so you can solve for that, and then once you solve for that, you can plug that back in to right there and find V sub A, and so I'll let you solve that on your own, but I'll write out the answers right now for you. And so T from A to B equals 0. 3, 4, 3, 4 seconds, and the velocity at a initial velocity equals 12.11 meters per second. Hopefully this lesson helped you. Once again, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask, and good luck in continuing to learn um, dynamics. Thanks.